As the title of this video suggests, we're going to look into performance around inserts into tables. But before we begin, let's get the basics down, aka the strategy which we're going to use for benchmarking. So we're going to create a database. We're going to insert some 5 million rows. And out of that, we're going to have two tables. So the strategy itself is relatively straightforward. Now we're going to repeat this by clearing all the buffer caches and execution plans and also dropping the database in between our tests so that we get a coherent and repetitive number that is repeatable within the error of margin so that we don't have false results. So first of all we're going to go ahead and create all of that so that we can do our first baseline. So with the miracle of video editing, I'm going to skip ahead to the point where this is done so that we can get our first test underway. So as you can see, our database was created and we didn't need to wait the obligatory time. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new query so that we can get our first insert out of the way. So we have our insert, which we're gonna use between two tables. And we're just going to measure the time it takes for the execution. And once more, we're going to use video editing in order to skip forward to the end result. So once our query is finished, we can see it took 37 seconds. This will perform the baseline for what we're going to do going forward. So this is now our result in terms of what we need to do better than. So there's a couple of things I want to point out, one of which is that you can see I will go through the process of clearing this and again through the video editing I'll skip a lot of this out because it will get a bit boring otherwise because we're going to repeat this exercise a number of times. But this is also our baseline for the where result. Now we're going to try a different version of this which is the accept. So we're going to skip ahead now to the accept statement just as the database is finished being created and use the accept statement to compare that with our 37 seconds with the where statement. So this time we're going to go ahead and if I hadn't made a typo, so as you can see, even in the video editing, it doesn't cut out everything. So to understand the fundamental difference in logic, instead of doing an insert where and then doing the compare, we're now doing a accept where those already exist. So it's a fundamental change in logic, but it gets you the same result. So and there we are with a 35 seconds instead of a 37, two second improvement, which doesn't represent all that much at a size that we're working with, but still it's a significant improvement percentage wise. Now, the next improvement we're gonna try is one that does have some implications to it. So we're going to start using uh, tab locks. Now these basically lock the tables to prevent other queries interfering with them and that exclusivity also gives you a much better performance. Now the downside to this obviously is that if you have read queries running at the same time it will impact them. So what you're doing is effectively trading one um, benefit in favor of another. So whilst you have faster inserts, you're effectively losing the, the read performance. Now with that said, as you can see, we have a 31, which is a, again an improvement over the 35 that we had previously and definitely an improvement over the 37 seconds that we started with. So let's reset the test again and see what else we can do. So next up on our list to try is begin transaction. Now transactions don't seem to make a lot of difference from a performance point of view, you might think, but believe it or not, they do actually have an impact on the query performance. And depending on the type of query and the volume of the query, including the commits, etc., you can see a performance impact. Now we're not going to see probably the biggest one in our testing, but we're going to go ahead and give it a try anyway. So we know that we need to improve on 31.03, oh sorry, 31.3, and that 31.3, the reason I noted out is because there will be a very marginal difference. So when I determined very marginal, here's what I meant. So we've got a 31.0. So that's a 0.3 of a second improvement. Not all that much, but 
and on a larger scale that can actually build up to be quite a significant amount therefore don't discount it completely however there are other ways of doing these kind of things as an example does it even make sense to be doing this insert would be one of the questions we must raise point in case we're inserting from a table to a table but if you don't need that table to already exist then an alternative would be to insert to a temp table now just to give you an example of how that might work performance wise here we're going to put in a temp table and we're just going to run the insert now I'm not going to bother even video editing it because it's down to a mere three seconds for the same query so this is the reason why temp tables for big imports are a better option assuming you can use them now another little thing that you can do is you can try to force the parallelism so in this case we're going to use the option of enable parallel plan preference now it doesn't sound that great and enthusiastic but look at it this way we haven't changed our query we're only changing the wrapping around it and if we run the execution once more we're going to see an improved time in fact 24.5 and what we've done is we've used the option to hint and enable parallelism plan preference now this is the really good way of getting the best out of your query plan in order to tell SQL I suggest that you use parallelism and it does now this is not perfect for every scenario but it's probably one of the better ones and it doesn't involve you needing to use the max dop settings which can be a little irritating since you don't always know what the size of the machine will be at the end now that's it for this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down and subscribe for more content